That's right, Beachy Gaming versus Team Liquid. Game one underway here. And, and I like that you talked about Beachy Gaming actually being the favorite here. It's been such a treat to watch this team make their way through the minors and now become just strong, consistent major contenders. Oh yeah, for sure. I feel like uh, the group stage performance is special. They did drop the series against an IP, but... I mean, they demolished LGD in their group stage to secure first. Yeah, we see how good LGD looks right now. Yeah. This is definitely a team that has just been getting better and better as the season has gone on. And there are certain similarities. We, uh, in fact, backstage, we were talking about the impact of the five positions in some of these games. We were talking about how good X Nova was in that last series. DY has had similar performances for Vici Gaming. And we've got the same kind of playmaking cores. <laughs> of course, Paparazzi's been doing so much. Paparazzi said uh, he would spam it for me. He'd figure it out. Mm. <laughs> We're to start off with Liquid actually running an aggro lane here. And we're going to have Doom up here in the top lane. Potentially in the one-on-one -on -one against Brewmaster. Should Vici Gaming look to switch up their lanes? Mm, potentially. I mean, you don't want to... The, the Monkey King cannot afford a bad laning phase, right? Yeah, I think uh, Monkey King... Very rarely do you ever want to see them just uh, get wrecked in the laning phase. He He's kind of like Viper slash Razor in that sense. Yeah. Where these heroes absolutely... Uh, rely on having a very stable laning phase to go with. I'm trying to see what the games look like, similar to what we did last game. Mm -hmm. I think I prefer Vici's lineup, because I think it is a very good Dusa game. Like, it's hard for them to burst her down. There are ways to kite her, but I think there's enough lockdown on the side of Vici with the Brewmaster, with the Disruptor, with the Shaman to follow up. Because I think there's two ways to play Deuce lineups. It's either you lock enough targets down for her, like you surround her with team fight, or you surround her with heroes that also can't get killed. Similar to what uh, PSG LGD did in the previous series when they played Deuce. Mm. But this is the other way around it, is like have a ton of lockdown to just help her out. As uh, Kuroki's going to TP the top lane. They are going to switch up the lanes. They really want to make sure they have this range troll into the melee Monkey King. And we'll see if Vici Gaming are going to do another round of musical lanes. And it looks like they might be. Monkey King is already beginning to back up, sensing that if there's no core in lane, they've got to be moving around. And he brings the courier to himself to turn into a courier so he can have that extra bit of movement Ooh. speed. He can run to bottom lane that much faster. That's a cool little play. I like that a lot. But the problem for him is that uh, the brew's not moving. So even if... Yeah, I'm not sure. It's like, this Yang seems like TP out? Like, that doesn't seem like. If Yang TPs out, then things are kind of like null. Well, then, then at that point, like, if he TPs out and they swap again, and they actually liquid TPs, then Paparazzi can TP and Yang can just swap and run across the map. Like, I mean, I this mean, is so they're, weird. They're, all le they're always leaving, like, one support that's actually pretty good. At farming, right? You want the Shadow Shaman to be oh, able to stay in the lane. They're actually well. just going to go for the straight up swap. And that's why I was really confused. I think Yang was just making sure that he got the maximum amount. Because if he yeah. gets top, he probably isn't getting a lot anyways. And there's no harm in giving a Shadow Shaman a good lane. Yeah. Right? Like, he, he's just getting solo. He can get an early level 2, level 3. If you had, like, Doom Shaman, I think you could contest this lane. Versus the yeah. Monkey King, because Monkey King isn't infallible against all melees. Like we often see, uh, who is it? Keen Gaming do Tidehunter plus Shaman or Tidehunter Lion, and they'll skill up Gush level one, for example, and just yep. get real aggressive early on. But here you've got an Earth Shaker, very passive support. Now Blitz, you you did say you liked Vici Gaming. I think you outlined pretty well. Uh, I think it's like how Vici Gaming wins. Yeah. So how does Liquid overcome that? Uh, Liquid needs to take early team fights. Okay. I, I think it's very similar. Like in these top teams, what ends up happening in the draft, like what ends up happening is uh, you'll say to yourself, oh, they've actually outdrafted us in this way. 
So you'll adjust accordingly. So for Liquid, I think they'll see when it comes to the ultra late, they probably don't want to play this game. There's just a ton of disable and ways for uh, Monkey and Deuce to get out their damage. Mm -hmm. Plus, I think Brew is like the ultimate crowd control team fighting off laner. Yeah. <laughs> Doom does counter him in a way, but like there's so many targets that he'll have to Doom. I think in this game to feel comfortable. Th that's another way to deal with Doom is just give him multiple targets as Yang getting gone on, but should be just fine as he backs himself out as Fade, gonna cop some hits. But and that one-to-one think... -one is like, you can always just play around it, right? Yeah, you, you just... can always just pre-split, yeah. like um, Pasha was doing in the previous game. I think it's like, maybe like 60-40, in terms of like how much I favor Ichi's lineup. Fade, just gonna eat their shot, couldn't actually get there in time for a good shackles yeah because you have to consider all the factors uh for example how easy it is to take objectives and i think that liquid can take objectives very easily with little to no risk yeah because they have a uh, shaker to disengage and they've got uh troll that can always pop his ulti plus they have a viper that can just sit in front and nobody on vici's lineup i think really wants to fight up against this viper so i could see liquid just pushing down towers like that and taking fights uh, conversely, I could very easily see both of them taking Roshan because of the Shaman Wards as Fade, Tub of Man. He's not gonna leave you alone. They need a TP in here to be able to save the Tub of Man because Fade hits so hard. They are gonna be able to get the Hex and with the help of the Mist Coil. Oh, this now is Fade great, has got to get out. He's forced many rotations and his haste rune will last just long enough. So he takes very little damage on his way out. He's forced both supports down here. Matama Man's jungling. This bottom lane is completely free for the Monkey King. There's literally no one down here. Uh, not the type of laning phase start that they want, although Yang getting quite low, but no real backup on the side of Liquid to finish this off. And the laning phase, I think, is going to be a little bit rough for them as a result Yeah, of how this is all shaken up. And it sounds like to me, and especially with the way Liquid did defensively rotate to help him out, that this Viper's game is going to be super important. If you're talking about the team fight being... The most important thing, Miracle's gonna be caught here by three heroes. He's tried to go for the bounty room, but he does have a miss call. He also applies the miss percentage chance on all of these heroes thanks to the Whirling Axes. And will be just fine, even if he doesn't get the bounties. It is a very good troll game, though. Once he gets BKP, it's gonna be hard for them to contest him. So that's why I, although I do favor Vici, it's not so much so that, uh, like last game I felt it was really hard for VP. The Doom, he takes so much damage, and Paparazzi thinks of that mobility of being able to go for the Tree Dance. He's able to kill the Doom, he couldn't even get the Devour on the Siege Wagon. They managed to stop him just in time. And that's a good way to be able to stop all that creep cutting. Hell, my control even blew a, a scan just to try and see if he could find a way to be able to pull that, uh, that wave. Yeah. In a safe position. I mean, the early game scans don't really... It, it's not like anyone's using it unless uh, there's some sort of mid-tower assault coming in and you want to make sure that nobody's hiding in the sidelines. But so far, so good. I think Liquid is, despite having to jungle, they've got really good heroes at jungling. That is the upside for their team. That even though two heroes were uh, forced to jungle and just completely leave the laning phase, they're like the two best heroes that could possibly do it, right? Yeah. You've got Doom that's got Devoured, you have Viper that with nether toxin farms up very quickly. That's why Fade is spending so much of his time, not in lane, but in the enemy jungle, just trying to disrupt anybody. A great Fisher nice block from GH. Miracle is gonna be able to get on top of DY and ensure the kill. And I think Liquid is very correctly prioritizing this troll, because like I said, I think troll with BKB in this game, uh, he's gonna be the reason why they win or lose. As mind control gonna get gone on, they don't wanna... Oh, mass rotations. They are going to be able to go for the ensnare here, trying to set up for the Fisher block, but that's why Paparazzi blows his Wukong's man just to be able to make sure that Liquid cannot chase down the support, but Viper's going to be able to come in from the side here, gets the Viper strike, not quite enough to be able to finish off Fate by itself, he has no he levels. lock it off. He has no levels of his poison attack, so after the ulti wears off, uh, absolutely no way to chase that Shaman. So it's more just like a general nuke. Yeah. 
Mind control. And then she get the Jingu stacks up to four. It's a big hit, but GH is going to be able to provide a lot of disable. And they you do have a lot here. of extra save as well. Mind control is going to be fine. It's going to be Paparazzi who tries to get the tree dance. He needs to be able to hide a little bit, but they just keep on finding him. Yeah. Not going to let him jump into the trees here. Paparazzi overextends himself at the bottom lane. Very surprised that he decided to go for that, considering he knows that both supports TP down there. And there's no easy way for them to get back up to Miracle. Oh, look at this big Pro stack. stack. Ori comes over. Gonna take most of it, but if they can't actually kill Yang here, which looks like it's gonna be easy for them to do so. It's not a bad exchange for Liquid whatsoever. Yeah, Matumba Man was coming over to clear the stack himself. And both supports. I, it's surprising that they're getting kills with uh, Abaddon Earthshaker. Yeah. Considering neither of them really deal that much damage. Those are super defensive supports. Yes, especially in this type of game, but uh, good rotations overall by Liquid. Weird commitment from Vici. They've got to be a little bit more careful about that. Now, Viper's always going to have a good game because he's a Viper of jungles. You say they're prioritizing the troll. This does mean that Mind Control's having the roughest game of the three cores. But even him, as a Doom, can still cobble together some sort of game as he just picks up level 5. Uh, the best part about Doom in this game, I think, is you'll recover once you have Doom up. Yeah. And Miracle is actually doing very well for himself, considering Liquid being rewarded right now for their faith is he's got the highest net worth in the game, even against the Dusa, where it feels like she's farmed up a lot of those stacks. She had that free mid lane where... Uh, gonna go on to this... GH in trouble here. Fisher needs to make sure that Yang can actually get the clap, but because of the glimpse, there's no way for GH to be able to disengage from this. He starts to run up, but eventually will be found. Paparazzi is going to join him here in the mid lane, but that does leave Fate alone here at the bottom. He's going to be snared up by the net, and Mind Control will run him down eventually, unless Fate can do some mega juke. Look at this, though. This mid, uh, this mid movement is often what Liquid likes to do, and I'd be really surprised if Liquid gave this up for free. Miracle, not even going for the 10 minute bounty, he just starts heading towards that mid lane. The tower will survive ever so barely, but now Miracle's gonna try and get sandwiched, but the problem split going down. They're just gonna disable him, and all of Ichi Gaming can run over. Liquid is on their way, but it's gonna be a little bit late. Miracle still has his ultimate, though. If he wants to be able to pop it the last second, he does manage to get it off, but he's inside the Wukong's mid, and he's just getting kited up. Meanwhile, they're gonna throw the Baton up in the air to make sure he can't save the troll, and now toss back down. He's gonna be able to provide the Aphonic Shield to Matumba Man, but Kuroki's already taking so much damage to Fisher actually blocks him in. Bruce a little bit scared though. He's going to TP out, leave the kill up to the Monkey King, who's going to be able to catch the Viper. This is a fight. Back to your shaker as well. Fiji Gaming, such cool movement out of all of that. Pressuring the mid and then sandwiching onto Miracle. Just beautiful stuff. It comes down to Paparazzi's position. He stayed in the tree line the entire time, waited up there, and it eventually does pay off when his Brewmaster finds the kill. I really like Miracle, the idea behind it, because he just comes down and he's like, I'm not even going to wait for the bounty runes. What's most important in this game is saving this mid tower, <laughs> as Kuro does get the deny, but it's the strategical disadvantage of losing your mid tower against a Dusa. Yeah. Because now it's not safe to even farm your own Ancients, and what will end up happening is they'll place more and more aggressive wards at your Ancients, and they'll try to take away that triangle of farm. And so for Liquid, it's very important now that they don't lose both uh, of the outer tier ones. They're most likely losing this top one in exchange for the bottom tier one tower, uh -huh. which I think is a fine trade because Liquid might even be able to make it back up here in time. They know there's no Bruce split and they're about to uh, hit six on Doom. Unfortunately, he has got no mana. Yeah, if they could somehow find a solution to that, they could mass rotate back up to that top lane and save their tier one. Yeah, but with the uh, Shaman Wards expended, I think this yeah. is going to be guaranteed towers. Paparazzi eats the tree to make sure that no one can do that sneaky TP up there. So instead, Liquid are going to head to mid. Top is not a lane they can defend, but maybe they can even out the game by being able to set up on this mid lane. But there is going to be the glyph, and Vici Gaming, this time it's going to be their turn to rotate in and defend, but they really need to make sure the Yang stays alive here, and he does manage to get out of that static storm. The glimpse back. GH is put in that silence once again. Yang going to be slowed down after hit after hit. Mind Control tries to chase him down, but he's too damn tanky. Yeah, and with this, though, really what you're trying to do is buy time for the Deuce to get here and frontline for you, and uh, Vici does. I mean, no Tier 1 team wants to ever give up that mid tower for free. They understand what it means. You give up this triangle of farm yourself. Yeah. Because now Liquid can make these 
uh, the smoke plays into your jungle, and it's very hard to punish them if Glyph isn't up, or uh, if your shrine isn't up on the left side. So right. keeping the mid tower alive is the easiest thing to do, even if it costs you some heroes. Which for Liquid, the biggest disaster was when they lost four heroes and the tower on top of that. Yeah. Surprisingly, it didn't actually put Vici Gaming that much ahead in net worth, only up by 1k. And I think that comes down to yeah, the traded tower and I mean, the heroes that uh, Liquid have. Right? Yeah, Mind Control will always have Devour, which just is your own mini Hanamitis. Yang surrounded here, tries to go for the primal split, he does actually get it off. GH missing the Fisher there and now maybe throwing away his life here as he's going to be glimpsed back. Surrounded by heroes, Vici Gaming, a very heavy rotation, but does at least shut down GH's game and, oh, maybe he can actually get a little bit more. No, that tornado's he, not going to last long. I'm even surprised that he was able to track him down. Yeah. Or with, uh, <laughs> the Brewmaster. 7-4, 2,000 net worth lead for Vici Gaming. You said, uh, Liquid... Going to be playing for their team fight. I'm presuming a lot of that's going to come down to Matamba Man having his mech. Yeah, and the BKB that will eventually come for Miracles is like second or third, right? third item. It's a huge difference, though, between the Medusa, who's able to farm up uh, Ancients, is at 7,500 net worth. Meanwhile, the Viper at just 5k. This is the problem with Medusa right now. It just seems like she farms so quickly. She gets into that, those first two items and actually becomes a viable threat nice and early. It's just a really hard matchup for Viper too because one uh, Medusa snake gets rid of all your mana mm. and you don't have a big pool to begin with to use your uh, Crosin. Mind control. Gonna get got here as they do get the Jingu stacks up. Very surprised they throw it on the Serpent Wards, but I guess they were afraid of Kuro coming in, providing the Aphotic Shield. They and do glimpse him back up to the top lane, though. They'll take the tower with this anyways, but Liquid, I, this is a really good trade by them. Yeah. Take the mid tower if you can, but Vici, with the successful scan, they know that this is happening. Yang doesn't have the ulti, but with the Dusak being here in front. And even though they don't have the Monkey King, it looks like Vici Gaming could defend, but they can't afford to lose so many of these heroes. The Static Storm does manage to go down. Curl does have the borrowed time. Miracle managed to get out of that silence, and now the Wukong's command goes down. Managed to get the stun out on a Miracle. He's finally going to pop that ultimate, turning and going on to Yang. It looks like Yang is probably going to die here. Miracle's actually healed up so much. And about half a for AG, it just managed to hit an Echo Slam there. Monkey King just dodges a lot of that damage by being able to turn into the tree. It will pop back now as his Viper sees him low. He's going to be able to get that kill. Matumba Man, oh, mind control. Tries to go off for the Doom. Not going to be able to get it off now. Now he's left in one versus five scenarios. He throws out the Doom, yes, but surely you knew that wasn't going to result in a kill. All of Vici Gaming survive and they wipe Liquid. That was the buyback from Yang, but he'll survive no problem. That was well worth his time. Absolutely. They clean house right there as Liquid they lose another fight and this is the difference, uh, let me say, between having a mid tower and not having a mid tower. Mm. It's just the awkward angle that you have to engage at and you have to just hope there's no shrine up if you do take that fight. Whereas if Vici want to make the same move down towards the south side of the map on Liquid's, uh, on Liquid's camp, on that triangle, it's a lot harder for Liquid to, to defend. It's just not as natural of a movement. You don't want to be there with multiple heroes. Vici feel like they can still protect that ancient camp, so they'll always be around there with at least some heroes, which is why Ori was in perfect position. Yeah. Power of having that Medusa and being able to defend that mid tower. And this is just a rough position for Liquid to be in when they last picked Dusa against the Viper mid. As I Miracle. will split outside of Vision to be able to catch Miracle here. They can get multiple disables and just slowly whittle them down, but Liquid do have enough time to be able to mass rotate in. Kuro's going to be here first, trying to get some sort of save, some sort of aphotic shield. They need to be able to buy a little bit of time for Miracle to pop off his ultimate. He pops it at the last second, is able to go for a fade here, but Ori's already marched forward onto Matumba Man, gets him as well as GH, and eventually Miracle's going to run out of time here as he hopes to get many bashes onto Paparazzi, but couldn't even kill DY. Only fade falls here for Vici Gaming. Triple kill for Ori and potentially a tier one tower. This is turning into quite the snowball fest for Vici Gaming. Yeah. You do see right there though, how good the troll ult can potentially look. It's just that Vici, without the BKB on the troll, without the SNY, it's very easy for them to just kite him. 
And that was with a very good fissure from uh, from the Earthshaker, but Vici, I mean, they're protecting everything at this point. They're not ditching their supports. Paparazzi's doing a very good job with this Monkey King of being elusive, never letting himself get gone on. And Yang's doing a great job of controlling some of these heroes, you know, throwing up the tornado onto the Ben. Multiple fights to make sure he can't stop these disables from Vici Gaming. And we're about to get a very big upbreak, upgrade if uh, Paparazzi can complete his Maelstrom. Just more farming potential. Uh, good team fight for very low cost too. Yeah. Same goes for the Vlads now for Yang. A massive upgrade in such a stat heavy hero like the Medusa. He is hurting an individual net worth right now uh, because, I mean, he had a buyback, but as the stats show, highest amount of assists at this time. So obviously worth it. Yeah. Like, Paparazzi. he may not have the guaranteed farm. Paparazzi's gonna be able to reveal, immediately tries to jump away. Thinking about the Wukong's command, because he knows he's in a situation, but he's been doomed up. They're gonna throw out the Static Storm, the Glimpse back on a G, it's just trying to get this Monkey King time, but he doesn't manage to get off that Jingu stack, but he can't get the swings in. They control him up pretty nicely. A big pick off on Paparazzi, who had a kill streak as well. Unfortunately, that kill goal did go to Kuro. Gold is gold at this point. That's true. But just an awkward engage from uh, Paparazzi. Not really entirely sure what the plan was. No, I have no idea. At this point, like, when you're ahead, Vichy Gaming, shouldn't they just be playing five man nonstop? Uh, I think they're just afraid of giving up too much on the map because Matumba Man knows that and he's splitting it. Yeah. But I guess you're not that afraid of a Viper. And then the, you. they do have really good ways to catch these splitting heroes. Is Yang? There's the glimpse. That's what I'm talking about right there. That long range disable, that long range catch. It's going to be tough for people like Matumba Man to be able to just barrel down lanes without dying. Playing against a disruptor when you're behind just looks like this. Anybody that tries to split push is going to get punished as a result. And this support duo from Vici, they're the real all stars for me. Fade and DY. It feels like they've been in everything. Very great performances by them. It and seems like that's one, one death. Of you have one death on a hero that has a magic wand. <laughs> yeah. You could see the vision game being controlled pretty well by Vici Gaming, I would say. Liquid forced to do a lot of defensive vision at this point. 16 to 7. 6,000 net worth lead as the 20 minute bounty runes are about to spawn. Vici Gaming just taking the right side of the map, willing to split this two for two. It feels like they're the... <laughs> Some teams just don't care about it at all. Like Keen. Yeah. Keen's like allergic to Bounty Rune. It seems like uh, this series and last. Oh, there, it's been very even. Very large emphasis on the bounties. Blink Dagger for GH. That could definitely turn the game around for Liquid. And a butterfly for Ori. Well, that just Ooh. makes things look a lot worse. That is an item. That is a huge item, especially with the Diffusal Blade on that troll. Now won't have to worry about the uh, attacks from the troll nearly as much. That is a fantastic pickup. And I feel like if she gets the BKB, I don't... Like, Liquid's gonna have to play again one of those games, just like we saw with the last Medusa, where they just ignore her and go for everybody else. It just doesn't feel fun to doom BKB targets. Yeah. Like, yeah, you take them out of the fight, so she can't use her Mystic Snake, but outside of that, does she really care? Probably not. And, uh... Probably gonna be a Crimson Guard out of Mind Control, as he just wants to get tankier. I think yeah. His assumption is if they can outlast in the team fights and get into a position where you can 1v5 kite the Dusa, which is how you're going to beat Dusa and Dusa games. Like, unless you completely crush her early game, which almost nobody does because she has the ability to catch up with Ancients, uh, similar to Dro Ranger. And it's great game for it too, right? You've got the Wukong's command as well as the split shot. A lot of instances of damage. A Crimson Guard can help protect against Paparazzi. will go for the scouting here. They see Curl. We'll go for the uh, Disables. They have the Glimpse at the last second. They can throw down after the borrowed time. Bring Curl back to his death. They're going to make sure to give the Jingu stacks to Paparazzi. So he can have the extra damage for this tower push. No chance to survive there. No. For Curl. They might even go for Roshan after this. I, mean, it seems I think like, uh, 
I love how Beachy Gaming go for these tower pushes, but simultaneously just move around the map so quickly. It's catching Liquid off guard, such as Mind Control here, much like Matumba Man last time. Tried to go for the split push, but such heavy rotations from Beachy Gaming. Can't you go Roach right now with Shaman Wards? Yeah. If you blew Monkey King all for this, I think this might be the play, but in fact, they're just going towards bottom. Look at the Look speed at that this. they're setting. Look at this! Matumba Man! Oh, don't tell me! Okay, no, oh, we got him! Fade successfully gets the Hex. They are so quick. Yes. Yes, they are. I mean, they just rotated, like, they just TP multiple heroes up to top lane, and they still have the TPs to go bottom as well. Yeah, and that comes down to, wow. uh, just Vici being so quick on the reactions. They're not even letting their towers get hit. I mean, Liquid in that situation, they just assume, oh, they're going to take our tier two. We're going to pressure the side lanes. But Vici Gaming say, no, we'll, we'll actually, we'll take this tier two a little bit later. First, we're going to kill your heroes. And Yang, I mean, that was so smart. He just pops his ulti immediately for the scouting mission. Yeah. What I love about Vici is they're not shy about using the ultis just to get catches on Liquid Heroes. Just get more and more map control. Seems like the, they're one of the teams that uh, operates with an advantage really well. Yeah. Because they're, they, they're so free with using their abilities, knowing the enemy team can't fight them. Was it DAC where Yang was like the last pick as an all-star? I think so. We we casted like when they were picking everybody, and I, I felt so bad for him because he's like, I just want to belong. Yeah. Well, in this game, he definitely belongs. Being able to accomplish so much with such little amount of net worth yeah. is impressive. And it's not even that little anymore. Now that they're winning the game, he's about to eclipse the Doom in net worth, which again, a Doom has that inherent farming mechanism, so that's not going to feel good. I mean, we're just not really seeing Liquid do anything on the map because I think they realize that five on five team fights are just not for them. Yeah. At this point, they just can't win them. So, so how do they get back into the game? What's their timing? Uh, the way they get back into the game is not giving up this Roshan. I think okay. if you give up the Sages to Ori, it becomes infinitely harder for you to win this game. If you take a fight around this Roshan and it's successful and you get the Aegis yourself, this is your biggest power hey. spike. Miracle has a BKB. If you can't win this team fight now, you're going to have to wait another 10 minutes to win the team fight. Team Liquid, do or die, must be able to win this engagement. They're going to go and find Fade first, but oh no, he just puts it down so quickly. GH is already gone, so they trade support for support. Matumbed is going to be botting some time here in the front line, forcing Vici Gaming back. Now, Roshan is still very low, so Liquid do still need to get inside that pit. They're careful, though, because GH does have Echo. They don't want to let it get so low, though, to the wards. Yeah, they need to be able to get a little bit of vision here to make sure they know. There's the Echo Slam on it, too. A great initiation now. The follow of Miracle pops the BKB with the Doom on the Medusa. and they can actually take her down on the sustain. Does fall for the new cards to end the Paparazzi focusing on the objective, trying to finish up Roshan the disabled. He does it. manage to get the Aegis. Now, the question is whether or not he can get away with the second life, because the first life is already gone. But Ori with the buyback comes in. Ori so up two. Look at that setup from him. GH trying to help out with the Fisher as well. Paparazzi will be able to follow this up with a nice stun. Doom, as well as the troll, are dead. Now they're going to be able to catch and bring him back in with a glimpse. That's going to be the abandoned down. Liquid will lose the second part of the fight. And Ori, he's going to tell his team, march down mid right now. Yes. We force buybacks for this. I use buyback for this. The gold differential that they gained from getting that Aegis was just a salve. It just sort of saved the game for themselves because Liquid, with that beautiful fight, they were able to isolate the Medusa so quickly. They need to be able to force buybacks or at least get this tower to Ori. make this trade worth it. Such a great stone gaze there and really well played by Paparazzi, realizing he could just go into the pit, get that Aegis. That's going to back out now. the fight as well. Not bad at all from Liquid, though. No. That was the best case scenario. They forced the buyback, they immediately popped the Aegis. They didn't lose racks, they didn't have to buy back themselves. That's how they can potentially win these fights. Get on top of the Dusa, make it hard for her to disengage. And that was just a really awkward fight for Vici to take because you saw they, uh, Paparazzi was really loath to just give up on that Roche area. Yeah. So you had him still hitting the Roshan uh, with the Shaman Wards and you had Ori on the other side trying to one on five, one on five fight. Which is possible, like he could stall in that engagement, but that's why the Doom comes in. They know that Stone Gaze is all important. Just really well done by Liquid. They just trapped him in one of those do or die positions. Yeah. Either you give us Aegis, because we have a troll and we'll take it in two seconds, or you take this 50-50 split fight. That does buy Liquid a bit back into the game. They don't have to worry about the Aegis. The net worth is not 
Spiraled out of control. DG Gaming is still up, though, by about 3k. Yeah. I mean, Liquid still definitely have a win condition now that the Dusa has used her buyback. I'd still say the game's like 80-20. And uh, once the Dusa gets her next item, it's going to be very favored. But Liquid's doing a good job of making sure that it doesn't just snowball. Because I could have easily seen this game go like 90-10 real quick. Yeah. Seems like they may have to wait out uh, an MKB for the troll. That would certainly help a lot. Both teams are really good at once, uh, once they've won the fight, being able to chase up. Yeah. They have a troll with a defusal. They have uh, Doom. They've got Earthshaker with this Fissure. They can follow up fights. And the scary thing for both lineups is that if you're beginning to lose the fight, you're not getting out. And that's what we see every single time is when Liquid begins to lose the fight, they don't just lose one hero, uh, they lose multiple heroes. But the same can be said the other way around. Find the initiation on the back. Oh, nice Sam echo. Sam goes out. They haven't actually finished up fame in the back line. Tina is actually going to be able to get away because the Wukong command is gone out. Miracles pops his ultimate oh, just fine, but it's just going to get controlled up too much. The, the Disruptor doing so much work being able to get that kinetic field, keeping the Doom inside of the Wukong's command, and also making sure that Kuro doesn't get away. They have the Thunder Strike, keeping the vision on side of the Doom. That's where the Shadow Shaman is able to find that Shackles. Looks like not even Matama Man is going to be able to get away as Yang expertly controls his Storm Panda to find the plus one. As you said, once you get broken in a fight, you're going to lose multiple heroes because you just cannot get away. And they all in committed to try to pop him before he got his BKB off, but I GH was assuming that the Doom would get off in time. Yeah. Wasn't able to do so, they weren't able to connect quite quick enough, and Ori with that ulti over the top just destroyed that troll. Crimson Guard trying to slow down this push. There is tier 2 still live, so it's not like VG Gaming are going to be able to go for 2 here. I could see that Echo being worth it if they got the Doom off onto the Monkey King. Uh, then they just get the Monkey out of the way. They can get on top of the other heroes because aside from the Dusa, they're not all that tanky. Yeah. I really feel what you're saying though about like being too many Doom targets. If you stop the Wukong's command, there's still going to be the Stone Gaze and vice versa. It's just awkward for mind control. Yeah. Because you could make a realistic case at this point for even using it at the Shaman. Yeah, considering how well Fate has been able to control up these heroes from distance. And Yang continues to have this sneakily good game. Not a ton of net worth, but his ulti usage has been more or less flawless. Yeah, super top tier. He's going to try and get a Crimson Guard of his own. As, as long as they're just tanky enough and he gets off that primal split. Seems Liquid not really capable of winning an engagement. And they're going to find the pickoff here in mind control every single time. Fate's just going to ensure it. Throw down the Serpent Wards. There's a Fissure that comes out trying to stall things a little bit. But that's why he threw down those Serpent Wards. Just to make sure if there's heroes behind the Doom that you still can get the kill. We see again no hesitation at all. You see a hero pop your ulti, who cares? Yeah. I think a lot of players are very reluctant to use these ults because they're dreaming of these uh, scenarios in which they'll be really useful. Like, yeah. what if we win a fight and then I can drop the Shaman Wards? They must have gotten like five, six kills now because of uh, the fact that they just pop them whenever they get the opportunity to. It ends the fight for Liquid all of a sudden. Dyer's top tower has fallen. The game getting more and more dire for Team Liquid is 28 to 10, 11,000 net worth lead. Vici Gaming feeling good about this right now. Go for the two man smoke. If they get one pick off with the Doom already dead, we could see another high ground push here in this top lane. Just gonna stay behind Ori. He's not gonna breach that high ground though. They can just back up and finish off the shrine that's still there. And curiously, uh, he's not opting to go for the Lincolns versus the Doom. Top I guess there's multiple ways to remove. I figured he'd go for that or uh, the Scotty. Yeah, but I definitely rely... expected Scotty. Yeah, just gonna rely on his talents, I guess. Yeah, and with the MKB, I mean, there's the mischance of the Dyer troll, those whirling axes. That's kind of a problem. Five man smoke up, Liquid. Call this the desperation smoke blitz. 
down by 11k. So many great items on Vici Gaming. They know they're liquid. Smokes. The only way they can win this is being able to find just the perfect initiation. But as you're saying, Vici Gaming very clearly knows about the smoke. Nobody's showing on the map. And they're just playing on the high ground with paparazzi in the trees. Will needing to break that smoke. It's 33 minutes in and they still have their mid tower. There's too much map control at this point. Yeah. But Liquid, they can still win this fight. They need this one though. You're right, this is a desperation smoke. They know they're staring at each other. A miracle, he's just going for it. Hour. They are going to be able to get the Viper Strike out onto the Disruptor. The hard part is, it's going to be... They can't really disengage that easily because of the glimpse. And the possibilities there. Fortunately, Matumba Man was able to force the Disruptor far enough back, but that's why T.Y. TP's onto the Shrine, and that's going to be your glimpse. They need to be able to save out the text. They pop the final split. Now they're going to be able to go to the back line. Target. Immediately tries to take out the Abaddon and stun up some of the rest of these heroes. But Liquid are retreating pretty well for themselves. There's still the borrow time on the Kuro, but it looks like Liquid is just going to leave him behind as they have to Shrine up right now. There is going to be the Tornado out from Yang. They're going to make sure there's going to be an opportunity for more of a fight if they want it. But no, they don't. The Primal Split's gonna wear out. And that was no sense in going into the high ground. And Miracle just kind of just TP'd out? No, it was GH that TP'd out. Miracle reset with the rest of his team, didn't have to pop his BKB. So not the worst situation at all for Liquid. That's probably an ideal trade. They finally take down that mid tower, so they don't always have to just smoke to make that uh, move in, and they don't always have to ward there. Now they can just focus their efforts on the Roshan Pit. As Miracle dips his head in just to see. And Mind Control, I guess the upside is that he didn't use Doom, but he's gonna have to find a target soon and just kind of consistently stick with it. Liquid very clearly want to take a fight here. No Primal Split, no uh, Wukong's Command either. They can get the pick off on Team Y. That'll make it a four versus four as well. They do with the Viper Strike onto this Brewmaster who doesn't have a save, but it is a back line. They've already been controlled up. This troll is just gonna fall like that. What a beautiful setup from Faye, being able to get the Shackles on the high ground. And now with a troll gone, feeling comfortable, or maybe not. They actually don't chase down the Viper. Beachy Gaming. Is good with the game as is, as long as they don't overextend themselves into uh, a potential buyback, but Miracle doesn't even have it. Just awkward engagement after awkward engagement, because uh, you see the frustration from Mind Control. He knows that Yang doesn't have his ulti, so he doesn't really want to doom him. Yep. He can't get to the back line of the Dusa. He has to walk through too many heroes. Paparazzi's already blown his full load. They're making it really hard for Mind Control to play this game. They're being so smart about how they, they, they just frustrate him. They throw bodies at him. Where, where they position themselves for these team fights, just beautiful. Yeah. Like the speed at which they played this game and going for the pick has made a lot for Beachy Gaming. And then on top of that, it just seems like when Liquid have an advantage, they can't actually get the good engagement. Just always being able to set up on a high ground situation. You see the uh, mind control holds his doom every single time because he's worried it's going to be useless. Yeah. Whereas Beachy, they're so far ahead that they're just like, we'll blow it every single time we can grab a kill on anybody. Aegis, cheese. Both going the way of Vici Gaming now. He has to drop it at some point though. They've lost too many fights for him not to use it. This is now three fights where we haven't seen the Doom get expended and... I know his life is hard, but at this point just use it on support. Get somebody out of the engagement. Almost a full Scotty here for the Monkey King if he wants to abandon his buyback. But it may not be necessary to win this fight as the extra life on Ori is going to look pretty good. Team Liquid, I don't know how they're going to be able to put together some sort of defense. They need a big echo and if they can doom somebody, uh, the Dusa or the Monkey King before they get their spells off, yeah, would be how they do it. Big stat upgrade in this Scotty as well as an increased amount of power in that Wukong's command. I mean, between Ori being able to sit in the front lines and Wukong's command that Liquid cannot fight into. I think you just go high ground with this DD do so. Oh, yeah. Force Liquid to get past you again. Yang trying to find the initiation here. Glimpse back onto Miracle. They don't want to blow any sort of BKB or anything like that. They do have the Aphonic Shield to remove the Hex, so Liquid will be okay here. Beachy Gaming poked at them, prodded them, tried to get some spells out, but nothing major was used. They're going to connect to top, though. They use the DD or the anticipation of the fight. They want to take advantage of this. They might not get better opportunities. Three minutes on their ages. 
Plus a DD Dusa. He's gonna walk oh, up the hill. It's gonna be Pierce's block, and it's gonna be his first life. The Bible Slip's gonna be used. Trying to find the disables. He's gonna try and throw Curl up into the air to be able to defend against the Symphonic Shield as best as possible. Paparazzi such a beautiful Wu Kong Command. Getting up the Jingo stack. Meryl's trying to make his oh, way out of all those stone statues, but unfortunately, Doom has been surf rewarded. He's gonna be left behind. It does not have a buyback. Team Liquid buyback on their Earthshaker here. As soon as the Primal Split is down and there's no Wu Kong's Command, it's possible that they can win an engagement here, defend this top lane, but it's going to be tough. Trying to burn away. They do have the four staff on Yang. Allows him to be able to disengage, and Vichy Gaming are getting out pretty cleanly here. They do even manage to get the range racks thanks to the Serpent Wards. And the buyback expended. They kill the Doom. They get one racks out of it. I think they'll be perfectly happy with that. As... No, I never see Vichy Gaming get too excited and, yeah. and continue to force things. It's just been so patient and disciplined with the way they take fights, get one objective and back out. I think it's because they have a lot of respect for Liquid. I think they have a lot of respect for Liquid. It's that idea that uh, if you lose a fight, Liquid will take everything. Yeah. And they have Troll on their team. So it really just takes one fight as we saw in the previous series too. So they're giving them like this wide berth. They're making absolute sure that they've secured this game for themselves. We've already seen Liquid make one very huge comeback against Pain Gaming. Which, oh, when I asked DH about it, he said they weren't even worried for that game. But I'm pretty sure he's not he having the same kind of optimistic thoughts about this, this one. Pain. This is looking like this is pretty much in the back for Vici Gaming. Barring some sort of terrible misfortune. Trying to push into the high ground once again, as they still even have the cheese on the Monkey King. They've got the level 25 Medusa now, who has a Satanic. He did not have that for the last fight. Tumaban wants to buy Shivas, also such a wants to keep his buyback. Uncharacteristically low kill game for Liquid. Yeah. We haven't really seen them make plays. It's almost 40 minutes, we've got 11 kills for them. I mean, it's easy to talk about Vici because they just keep going around the map nonstop. Uh, catching them while they try to split push. Whereas Liquid is just playing in survival mode right now. And it's felt like they played that way for the first 10 minutes. Kinetic Field's gonna go up. BKB immediately goes down. Primal Split is activated. Throws the Viper up in the air and is gonna focus on Curl until the Brawl Time goes off. So now they move on to another target. The Tumble Man is gonna be controlled up with a nice glimpse from Miracle to BKB right out. He is gonna get caught on and finished off. He immediately is forced to buy back here. Once again, Vici Gaming have used all their big team fight spells. And with the threat of the buyback being used. They just back up once again, knowing that Liquid really do not have the ways to chase. Doom's about to fall. Look at Monkey King, he's staring himself. He's got the Doom about to wear out. He still has a cheesy Echo Sam goes down to the back line. Trying to control up these heroes, but there's no damage to be able to follow it up. Miracle is trying to go for Yang, but another great force staff, and now he's being controlled up with a BKB not being there. He's so easily disabled, but will be able to get some damage out until finally he does fall. All of BG Gaming saving about half or 100% HP as they wipe out more and more Liquid members, leaving the Tom Man for last year. GE just made it to go in and finish off the Shadow Shaman, but Matoma Man is eventually going to fall here. GH has no way out, so that is going to be it. Team Liquid will call it here. GG, Vici Gaming. One up on Liquid in this series. This was an oppressive game one. Like, it didn't really feel like they were playing the same game. Wherever Liquid tried to split push, they instantly got caught out. Every single time. We saw Liquid put it together around that Roshan fight, but with the buyback of Ori that just pushed them over the edge, they were able to take the tier three, and from there, Vici Gaming, they collected themselves, they got back into that rhythm of just pick off after pick.